Hey yo everyone and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to talk about one of the greatest rock bands and Dutch uh, band of all time. Today we're going to talk about Nirvana. They are one of my personal favorites like every artist that we talk about on this channel. And now, between what I knew and what I didn't know about Nirvana, I present to you the legendary group Nirvana. So if you're ready, join me! I found 10 anecdotes about the band that I absolutely love and I wanted to share to you. So let's get right into it. Number one, when Jason Emmerman got scammed by Nirvana. In 1989, uh, Jason joined Nirvana as a second guitarist. He actually funded uh, Nirvana's first album, Bleach, um, for $606. He paid for the album because he was the only one that actually had a real-time uh, job at the time. However, even though he funded the album, he is in no songs. He was just simply thanked in the album booklet. But that wasn't the end of the story because Jason was actually fired by Kurt Cobain um, after having a bad tour with him. Number two, the quest for Grohl. Of course, uh, today we know the drummer of um, Nirvana as being Dave Grohl, but it wasn't always the case. Actually, Nirvana tested five drummers in um, less than three years. Here's a quick summary of some of them. So first, at the beginning of the band there was Aaron Burkhardt, late 1987 till 1988. He was fired because he got in too many physical altercations and didn't take the band too seriously, of course according to Kurt Cobain. Then came Dale uh, Crover that joined in 1988, till about uh, August 1990. He recorded a 10 song demo with the band and did a tour with them in the 90s uh, in the west coast. There was also Dave Foster in 1988 from Dale Crover's recommendation, and then uh, Chad Channing as well from 1988 to 1990, and finally uh, Dan Peters that stayed for about 3 months uh, in 1990 from June to September. And from there at the end of the year 1990, uh, Dave Grohl came and of course became the legendary drummer we know today and he later founded uh, the Foo Fighters. Now number three, uh, the perfect name. There was Fecal Matter, Ted Ed Fred, Skid Row, um, Bliss, or Pen Chap Shu. Do any of these names uh, ring a bell to you? If uh, Nirvana had one thing that I had a hard time finding, except a drummer, was uh, an actual name. And of course, uh, they wouldn't have, I think, the success they had if they were named Fecal Matter, of course. Album names also were a big discussion for the band. Uh, for example, the album In Utero, uh, that was a great album, was supposed to be called I Hate Myself uh, and I Want to Die. But following the suicides uh, of two of their fans, uh, Chris asked Kurt to come up with uh, another name. He was inspired by uh, a poem that had written his wife, Bernie Love, to come up with the name Inutero. As for the album Nevermind, that was maybe their biggest album, which I have here, this one. This is Nevermind. And the actual name was supposed to be Sheep, as an inside joke for the band to describe the people that become sort of sheeps when a group becomes famous, and when artists like them become successful. Now, uh, fourth, did you know that Pat Smear, who was the second guitarist of the group Nirvana, acknowledged a lot of tragic endings for uh, the groups he joined. So of course Nirvana's a uh, tragic end with uh, Kurt Cobain's suicide, but also the group The Germs that also ended tragically with the suicide of its lead singer, Darby Crash. Now number five about one of the most famous Nirvana song, maybe the most famous one, was Smells Like Teen Spirit, of course. The song Smells Like Teen Spirit has a unique origin. One night, um, Kurt Cobain and Kathleen Anna went out, got drunk and started spraying feminist slogans on the wall. And the end of the night, uh, Kathleen started writing Kurt Smells Like Teen Spirit. Teen Spirit was uh, the brand of deodorant that uh, Kurt's girlfriend at the time, Toby Vale, used actually. And Kurt Cobain didn't know this after a few weeks after um, the song was released. Now number six, this is a quite a fun anecdote. Do you know the song Drain You, the eighth track of the album Nevermind? Did you ever notice that it had a unique bridge that included uh, the sounds of a plastic duck, for example? Sounds of chains and spray cans. Kurt actually had the idea of replacing the guitars by these sounds. And Andy Wallace, the sound engineer, um, just made it happen. So that's where it comes from. Now number seven, uh, Kurt Cobain of course was an artist, but he wasn't only a musician and a singer, he was also a drawer. He actually planned to join an art school. Some of his drawings and some of his logos were used in uh, some of Nirvana's albums and are now exhibited in uh, some museums worldwide. Now number 8, Kurt Cobain had an imaginary friend that was called uh, Butter as a child. And later on when he grew up he blamed Butter for all the bad things that had happened in his life. The suicide note he um, left behind him actually was addressed to Butter, talking about his difficult relationship with music and success. And for me, Butter makes me think of uh, Nirvana, but I'm not sure of the link between the two. 
Now number eight, before becoming a phenomenon and becoming a successful rocker, Kurt Cobain worked as a janitor in his uh, former high school. You might remember the dancing janitor that we can see in the clip of Smells Like Teen Spirit. But that actually was a prank uh, by Kurt and the other students that were with him and that knew this story um, to do just a prank in the video, to joke about his previous job. So now, 10th anecdote. There was a rumor that um, Quentin Tarantino so apparently offered Kurt Cobain a role in Pulp Fiction, this movie. But no one knows if it's just a rumor. Uh, Quentin Tarantino never actually confirmed it, even though Quentin Tarantino is at the end of one of Nirvana's album in the thank list. But actually, it wasn't for that, it was just because Kurt actually loved Reservoir Dogs, uh, Tarantino's first film in 1992. It would have created a unique mark in that movie, and I think he would have been great in it. Well there, I really hope you like this. Um, normally when I talk about a musician, artist, actors uh, that I love, uh, usually I do a little background story about them, but there I just prefer to do just 10 anecdotes about them. I want to wish you an amazing day. I'm sure you will, as always. See you very, very soon, guys. Bye-bye.